In response to Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, President Biden today announced new sanctions against Russia, but acknowledged that it will take some time for their full impacts to be felt by Russia and its economy. In his remarks earlier this afternoon, the president also said America stands up to bullies just three minutes after saying the U.S. will not be sending troops to Ukraine. Earlier this afternoon, we connected with CBN News senior international correspondent George Thomas, who is on the ground in Ukraine. George, what's it look like right now on the ground in Ukraine? Yeah, but uh, 15 hours into this invasion, uh, look, the Ukrainians are pretty much pinned on all sides. I mean, it started uh, in the east, it moved to the south and then to the north. Uh, uh, the troops, uh, Russian troops rolling their tanks across the Crimean Bridge did not uh, face any resistance. Uh, the same to some extent in the north as they rolled down into Belarus. Uh, my understanding is that uh, as of this hour, uh, we, we were not getting any reports, uh, concrete uh, reports, that the Russians have uh, passed the so-called line of contact uh, in the east. It, appar it apparently uh, it seems like the Ukrainians are holding that position. But seriously, you know, they are, they are sort of surrounded uh, on all three sides. George, let me ask you this right now. Do the Ukrainians feel as if they're standing alone? The Ukrainians absolutely feel like they're standing alone. Absolutely. One source said to me moments after the first bomb started dropping, he said, George, we don't need uh, more sanctions. We don't need uh, a unity, show of unity amongst the EU or NATO members. What we need is hundreds of U.S. Air, uh, uh, fighter jets and NATO jets flying over Ukrainian airspace. That is what's going to send a very powerful message to, to the Kremlin. You've got to use force to deal with uh, with a person like uh, like Vladimir Putin. Again, that was CBN's George Thomas in Ukraine. Join me now with more on the current crisis is the former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mr. Secretary, welcome back to the program. Tony, it's great to be with you. Thank you for having me on today at this very, very challenging moment. You said recently that it's not Vladimir Putin who has changed. It's America's leadership that has changed. Explain. Well, for our four years, my time in service as a secretary of state, the last two and a half of those four years, we were resolved to protect American interest everywhere. We put America first and we let bad guys, we let authoritarians from Xi Jinping in China to Chairman Kim in North Korea to the Ayatollah in Iran and indeed Vladimir Putin himself in Russia. We let them know we were going to protect the things that mattered most to America. This administration has not been able to manage that same level of deterrence. You can you can see Vladimir Putin hears Biden, President Biden come to the microphone and give some weak sanctions in response to a massive invasion of Europe. Uh, that's just that's signaling to the world that America has lost its capacity, its leadership capacity to actually deliver good outcomes. We're a great nation. We're a powerful nation. They, this thug understands one thing, brute force. We should give him the brute force that he deserves for the evil aggression he has now imposed on the Ukrainian people. Mr. Secretary, I mean, going back to use a very simple analogy, the schoolyard uh, in elementary school, you get bullies and they pick on those who are weak. Uh, and, and I would think that what happened was that during the Trump years that Vladimir Putin was pretty much bottled up, hemmed in uh, because he didn't understand. He did not know how America would respond. He, he, he knew it would be with force. But I think it appears that he's picking on America and others are ignoring America and picking on others because he perceives weakness. I, I fear that that's absolutely what's taking place. And I, when I say I fear that, that's certainly what's happening in Ukraine today. I fear that we'll see a cascading series of crises, right? Even as we speak, Tony, even as we speak, the United States is in Vienna with the Russians on their side of the table, on our side of the table, the American side of the table, negotiating a deal to create a pathway for a nuclear weapon for the Iranians. You've got Russians negotiating as partners of the United States while Russia is invading Ukraine. That is, I, 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 you, you can hear it in my voice. I, it, this is incomprehensible to me. It sends exactly the signal that Vladimir Putin hears, which is, I can move about the cabin. I can go destroy the lives of Ukrainian children and women. And the United States and the West will do nearly nothing to push back against me. Will Vladimir Putin stop with Ukraine? Is this simply a desire to create the buffer states around Russia, or will he go beyond? I think we should take. I think we should take Vladimir Putin at his word in terms of his intentions. He's spoken about this many times. Most recently, in a 
long meandering revision of history, of the history of World War II and the history of Russia, indeed, where he talked about countries in particular, Finland, the Baltics. Uh, we, we should be sure that Vladimir Putin desires the, the, uh, the resurrection of the Soviet Union or a, a greater Russia from the times of Peter the Great. Uh, Vladimir Putin will be intent on this only until the moment he meets force and real resistance. So long as we are soft, so long as the West allows him to have $100 barrel oil and to continue to destroy freedoms in Ukraine, he'll continue to keep moving, Tony. As you mentioned earlier, this has cascading effects. I mean, we're already seeing this in Taiwan, where uh, China has flown into uh, defense airspace of the Taiwanese. Um, and, I, and I know you're, you're going to be meeting with the Taiwanese uh, president, I, I believe, next week. Um, where else might we see activity as a result of America's response or lack thereof to what's happening in Ukraine? Tony, I think you can see it in a number of places. You'll see it in uh, certain dimensions of warfare. You'll see them continue to build out their missile systems, their space systems, their cyber capabilities. You'll see it physically on the ground. They'll be more aggressive in Syria, where you have U.S. forces nearly uh, tank nose to tank nose with the Russians. It, it wouldn't surprise me if they continue to move the boundaries in places like Georgia and uh, other regions that are close to Russia. And this is someone who understands what power is and when 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 power meets weakness it's a total mismatch tony well in an unbelievable but candid look at the misplaced priorities of this administration john kerry who was former secretary of state uh said this about what's happening in ukraine play clip eight please I hope diplomacy will win but a massive uh emissions consequences to the war but equally importantly you're going to lose people's focus. You're going to lose certainly big country attention because they will be diverted. And, and uh, I think it could have a damaging impact. I hope President Putin will help us to stay on track with respect to what we need to do for the climate. I mean, we, we have innocent civilians, women and children being killed. And we have John Kerry talking about hoping Vladimir Putin will help preserve the environment. Tony, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> you know, this administration has truly led with climate change in every field. John Kerry was the first American senior leader to go meet with Vladimir Putin, not Secretary Blinken, not President Biden, but John Kerry. We told Vladimir Putin, if you'll tell us a few lies on carbon reduction, uh, we'll let you do whatever it is you want to do. This is what we're seeing today. This is this is ludicrous to say that somehow, boy, in, in spite of the fact he's invading Ukraine, I sure hope he'll take a, a coal-fired power plant down. A, he's not going to take his coal-fired power plant down, and B, that's just crazy to think that the correct response to an authoritarian aggressor like Vladimir Putin is to say, "Hey, can we all meet in Copenhagen and have a glass of, have a cup of tea and talk about climate change?" I, if I were President Biden, I'd, I'd call him back immediately. I'd tell him to stop diminishing the United States in the eyes of the world. This underscores something that uh, a phrase that we hear often, uh, I use it many times a day, that is elections have consequences. And, and we're seeing this play out both on the international stage and domestically. When we see the misplaced priorities of this administration, we're paying for it at the pump. Uh, we're seeing, you know, we got truckers, you know, driving across the country, standing up for freedom. Uh, you know, we have innocent civilians dying in foreign countries all coming back to American weakness in misplaced priorities. You know, Tony, you hit it on the head there. We could get a twofer. Perhaps the m quickest thing that President Biden could do to put pressure on Vladimir Putin would be to immediately direct that we lift all the new regulations he's put in place, denying America the capacity to produce its own energy and ship that energy around the world. I don't know what it's sitting at as we're speaking today. Close to 100 bucks a barrel, Tony. That's right. going to be a gas pump for every American. It's going to be LNG, too, natural gas. It's going to cost more for folks to heat their homes or cool their homes in the summertime. Uh, we have the capacity to drill. We were, we were up to almost 13 million barrels per day in the Trump administration. We're now down to something like 85% of that. President Biden says, I'm going to open the strategic, strategic petroleum reserve. The biggest petroleum reserve and the most strategic one is the one that's underground. We ought to drill, baby, drill and ship it, ship it to Germany, ship it to Estonia, ship it to Ukraine, ship it to Latvia and Lithuania. We can change the lives of these people. 
And when you drive the price down to 50 bucks a barrel, where it's at for much of the Trump administration, you will be denying the very monetary fuel that is allowing Vladimir Putin to roll tanks in and kill women and children in Ukraine today. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, just got a few seconds, but do you see this administration having the capacity to do a course correction? Tony, you began with prayer. I, I pray that they will get this right. You and I have been in the trenches working on religious freedom too. I was speaking today with a friend named Father Oleg, a great Christian man who's a leader of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church who is running a hospital in Kyiv. He sent pictures from what's taking place, the soldiers that are already coming back, the destruction of the freedom of Ukrainians to make decisions for themselves, their democracy, their faith. This will be destroyed. I pray that President Biden will come to see this clearly and come to take the actions that will lead America to the right place to push back against Vladimir Putin. And we will join you uh, in that prayer. Mr. Secretary, always great to talk with you.